Earlier, we discussed testing for a correlation, which is a good way to see if a relationship exists between two continuous variables, x and y. In our example, we were able to test whether the fuel efficiency of a car was related to its weight. But what if you want to turn this relationship into a prediction? For instance, what would be the fuel efficiency of a 4,500-pound car? We can do this by fitting a linear model, or linear regression, which is done in R with the LM function. So let's save this uh, linear fit to a model to a variable by doing fit equals, then we do LM for linear model, parentheses. Now I put the formula we're testing, which is miles per gallon explained by weight. Remember that tilde means explained by, and the data we're working with, MT cars. This saves the fit. Now we can look at the details of it with the summary function. Summary of fit. This output contains a ton of information, even more than the t-test or correlation test did. Let's look at a few parts of it. Briefly, this first part shows the call. That's the way that the function was called, miles per gallon explained by weight using the empty cars data. This summarizes the residuals. That's how much the model got each of those, uh, its predictions wrong, how, how different the predictions were than the actual results. This table, the most interesting part, is the coefficients. This shows our actual predictor and the significance of each of the predictors. So first we have our estimate of the y-intercept. This is showing what uh, the hypothetical uh, miles per gallon would be of a car that weighed zero in this linear model. We also see the weight. It's the effect of the weight, or the, the coefficient of the weight, or the slope. So this shows the negative relationship. Increasing weight decreases mile, miles per gallon. In particular, increasing the weight by 1,000 pounds would decrease the efficiency by 5.3 miles per gallon. The second column is called the standard error. We won't examine it today, but in short, it represents the amount of uncertainty in this estimate. This third column is called the test statistic, a mathematically relevant value that was used to compute the last column, which is the p-value, describing whether this relationship could be due to chance. You might notice that the p-value for weight, for weight 1.29 times 10 to the minus 10 is exactly the same as it was for our earlier correlation test. That's because we're testing the same trend. We can extract this matrix of coefficients using the coef function. So that would be here, coef of summary of fit. From that, we get a matrix. If we want to extract out just the estimates, just the y-intercept and the slope, the y-intercept and the coefficient for weight, we would get the first column of this matrix. Let's save it to a, a vector. So I save it to a matrix, CO equals coef, and get the first column, co. Recall this is how we get the first column of matrix, estimate of y-intercept and weight. If we want to get the p-values, we would get the fourth column. The p-value for the y-intercept is not 0, and the p-value for the weight relationship. The advantage of a linear model is that it can be used not only for statistical testing, but also for prediction. This model predicts a gas mileage for each of our existing cars using the predict function. Predict of fit. You'll notice that for each of these uh, cars that we have, we get one prediction of the miles per uh, gallon based on this linear fit. Now, these predictions aren't really that useful to us because we already have the actual gas mileage of each of these cars. But what if we wanted to predict the gas mileage of a car that has a weight of, say, 4,500 pounds? We could do this by adding together the intercept term and the coefficient estimate times the weight. So if summary of fit looks like this, we can add together the, in the intercept term, 37.2851, plus the, the weight coefficient, negative 5.3445, times our new weight, which is 4.5 thousands of pounds. This would predict a fuel efficiency of 13.2 miles per gallon. This is what a linear model actually means. It's a linear combination of the intercept and the slope. Now, there's a shortcut for producing, producing this value from the fit using the predict function. First, we can create a data frame containing the predictors we wish to use. In this case, imagine we had a new car that was new car equals data dot frame. Inside here, we put the weight 
weight equals 4.5. Now that we've created this data frame, we do predict on both our fit and our new car. This cal calculates the same estimate, 13.235, predicting this, this car's miles per gallon using this fit. Finally, note that we can show a linear model on our plot using a method built into ggplot2, geom underscore smooth. So when we had our earlier plot, is ggplot, ggplot, mt cars, weight was on the x-axis, miles per gallon was on the y-axis. We say it's a scatter plot, geom underscore point. Now let's add to it the layer of geom underscore smooth and tell it the method we wish to use is a linear model, the same one we've been learning. Now we get a linear trend on our ggplot. The gray area shown is the uncertainty in the fit. It's a 95% confidence interval of where the true trend line could be. It's worth noting that this is not a perfect linear fit. We can see values both at the low end and the high end have a tendency to be higher than we would predict. Dealing with these issues is beyond the scope of this lesson.